So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the results from testing 15 different caching plugins using the Divi theme by Elegant Theme. Website speed. We know it's important. We know it's important to your customers and we know it's important as a ranking factor for SEO. Now, in the last couple of years, there's been a variety of new WordPress themes that have built-in page builders. And these built-in page builders are great. They allow you to really customize your site without having to know a lot of code. One of the issues we have with these page builders, though, is they do make the site a little bit more bloated and a little bit slower. Now, ideally, you want your website to load in less than three seconds, and the closer to two or even one second, even better. Now, there's a lot of ways to actually optimize your site for speed. The first one, which all of us should do, is optimizing the photos. Make sure they're not too big so that they load real fast. You know, the second one we could do is using a content delivery network. Um, but of course, that's an additional cost that we have to pay for. And the third one, and one of the easiest ways, is to install a caching plugin onto our site. Now, a caching plugin is just a bit of code that, in a nutshell, changes your site from a dynamically driven site into more like a static one. It takes pages you already have and makes it look like a static website so that whenever someone comes to your site, it doesn't have to ping the server back and forth to, to load the information. So it makes it quite a bit faster. The problem you have is there are actually tons and tons of caching plugins. And, you know, I've probably found 20 or 30 of them. And what I decided to do is to test 15 of them on the Divi theme. And I like the Divi theme. I use it for a lot of my customers probably eight out of 10 times. Um, it makes it easier for them to update. I can easily create something for them. And so I decided to test it on that. Now, before we start, there is a disclaimer here. Um, I'm not a talented programmer. I'm not a network engineer. I'm not a Linux guru. Um, so if you think I got it wrong, right? Like if you're the plugin developer and you think I got it wrong or the configuration's wrong, reach out to me either through the comments or through my website and I'll set it up and I'll let you optimize it and rerun the test and, and update the, um, the page as well. I'm more than happy to do that. You know, and before I start, if you want to jump ahead to the end of the results, I'll have uh, a link down here or a time code down here that you'll be able to check that out. Let's talk about the criteria I used for this test. So first, to be glued in this test, it had to have the following characteristics. Um, one, it had to be have at least a thousand installs according to the WordPress, WordPress plugin repository or be a paid and supported plugin. It needed to have at least a four star rating because I didn't want any buggy ones. And finally, it needed to be updated at the very least in the last year. Now, that's technically too long. I like to see things that are actively maintained, but I set one year figure within that case, we're in good shape. So the hosting that I use, because it's important as well, um, I have a reseller account, hosting account that I use for my clients. And that reseller account, I use WHM. I can create two clean environments, uh, one where I built the main site and a second one where I'm able to clone it over and test it out. And because each site has its own cPanel, I can easily blow out, clone it, and reload so that each plugin then has a fair chance. Finally, I used the same plugin that I would for a normal site for my customers. And this included iThemes Backup Buddy, iThemes Security Pro, Contact Form 7, All-in-One SEO Pack, Tiny MCE Advance, and then obviously WordPress Clone, which allowed me to easily clone the site every time I wanted to do it. Now the dummy site I created, it originally loaded in about 3.3 seconds. And I probably could have optimized it a little bit more, but I wanted to do things kind of like everybody else would. A lot of time we don't spend time optimizing. Um, depending on what time I did the test, I got even better speed, sometimes worse speed, but 3.3 was on average. Now, by adding a caching plugin, I got the, I got the speed down to anywhere between one second and 2.4 seconds, which is absolutely amazing. So any caching plugin that you use is actually gonna be beneficial to you. So if you're using one that maybe didn't perform well, don't worry, at least you're using one and making those speed differences for your site. 
Now the best performing plugin was a paid one called WordPress Rocket. And with this plugin, I was easily able to get down to a one second load time, which is in my mind, absolutely amazing. You know, a one second load time is absolutely great. Um, it's $39 a year for a single site. Um, and I think it's a very reasonable cost. Now, the second best one was actually a free one and it was called WordPress Fastest Cache. And with that one, I was able to get down to 1.3 seconds. Um, it's installed on over 100,000 sites and I think it has either a four and a half or a five star review. I was, it's pretty simple. You can look at it on my website. They also have a premium version, which I did not test. So, um, you know, if you're the creator of WordPress, fast, uh, WordPress Fastest Cache and you wanna give me a demo of the, uh, of the premium, I'm more than happy to retest that as well. Coming in second was A2 Optimize Cache and WordFence with their Falcon caching engine. Both of them brought the load time down to 1.5 seconds. And one of the great things about WordFence is they also have a really strong security component. Uh, so it's a, it, you get kind of double there. You get a good page speed load as well as real strong security for your website. Um, if you are an A2 as a hosting company, uh, I have a feeling maybe their caching plugin might perform even better. Um, it, it doesn't surprise me because it has the same characteristics as Verotech that I use. Uh, so check that one if you're using A2, it might be really good for you. Finally, coming in third were WP Supercache, which is owned by Automatic, the company that creates uh, WordPress, uh, W3 Total Cache, and Gator Cache at 1.6 seconds. The other plugins I tested, they did reduce load times anywhere between 2 and 2.4 seconds, but it's really hard to compete with 1, 1.5, and 1.6 seconds. So the question is, is which plugin should you get? So before I give you a recommendation, I have a few caveats. Uh, first of all, hosting companies are all configured differently. And so depending on the configuration, your results might change significantly or even a little bit at all. As an example, the hosting company that I use, they use Lightspeed instead of Apache and they use Cloud Linux instead of CentOS as their Linux package. So it could make a difference. Um, second, I did this on what I would consider a fairly light site, something like a traditional corporate site that might be out there. If you have a really heavy blog, the different caching plugins could perform differently. And finally, if you have really bad hosting, uh, for example, if you have hosting that's been recommended by all the gurus out there, uh, this could make a big difference in the performance of your website. So recommendation number one, if you're running an e-commerce site, go ahead and pay for a WP Rocket. Uh, mainly the reason there is because you are taking credit cards and hacking risks are such a bigger deal, you really want a company that's going to maintain and keep the plugin up to date. Now, in addition to this, WP Rocket also allows you to exclude specific pages from the cache. So the checkout pages that need to be dynamic that you don't wanna be cached, you can actually exclude them as well. An additional bonus to WP Rocket is the fact that they actually have some more functionality that allow you to clean out revisions. So, um, sometime back in like WordPress 2.7 or so, they started started saving revisions. And over time, they can add up really quick and really blow up your site. So it's another one that they don't really talk about, but a great addition to a paid plugin. Now, if you're running an informational site or you're just starting out and you don't have a huge budget, um, the two I would suggest are either WP Fastest Cache, which just got great performance and it's easy you know, it's easy to set up. Or I would use WordPress, WordFence. And the reason I would say WordFence is even though it doesn't perform as well as WP Fastest Cache, it does have a, secu a security component in there to help you lock down your site from hackers. So if there are other actively maintained caching plugins that you think I missed and I should be testing, go ahead and leave a comment below on which ones you think I should use. And if you're the plugin creator and you think I didn't configure it properly, reach out to me as well. I'm more than happy to give you access to the test site. You can go ahead and configure it. We'll run the tests again. Again, thank you for watching. 
Don't forget to subscribe. And if you think anybody else could use this, go ahead and share it with them as much as possible. So thanks again for watching. Hope you get a lot out of this.